Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Today join me as I explore the enchanted woods as it transforms into the early days of spring. Connect with the fairies who are just waking up from their slumber and do some forest rituals. Try an awakening ancient technique to help me align and have a rather interesting experience. And a winter's picnic of delicious fairy snacks and teas all packed into my adventure backpack. And finally, to sum up some altar work, so sit back, relax, and keep on watching. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome. You've joined me today on this beautiful February morning. I have been having a lovely February, I don't know about you, it's been really lovely. I had a great birthday and now I'm back and I'm really excited because today I'm going to take you on a journey with me into the Enchanted Woods. And I thought it'd be really fun to challenge myself today to actually film a video in one day. And it's like an act of self-love for myself for this February too, because usually it takes such a long time and I'm not complaining because that's a beautiful thing, but sometimes I want to change up a little bit just to challenge myself and just so you know, have fun with it. So I have down here, my bag and you know it's going to be a fun walk when I have this bag with me. This bag is literally like Mary Poppins bag. It's full of so many things that I might need that I may need on a walk. I change it up each time I go for a walk but today I need to fill it with all my different things and I'll share with you what that is in a minute. But first we're going to sit here in the cozy nook, relax, we're still in hibernation mode and watch the birdies. Right, what was I doing? Okay. Tales. All 
Oh boy, can I not wait for that? <laughs> I am ready. Mm, I love my bag and it matches. It makes me so happy. Okay, so here is my patrolling bag. Let me share with you what I've placed inside it for the walk today. The first thing I have, and I so regret a walk if I do not bring out with me a bottle of water, hot water, like a drink, a tea or something, but this time it's just hot water in here. Because as you saw, I filled some tea bags with some speciality teas, which I'll be making in the woods. I've also got my little metal spoon, of course. And on this little hinge here is my mug, my cup, or my bowl, whatever it may be. Today it's going to serve as a bowl, but also a cup. That's just so handy and it just clips on the out of my bag because it would not fit in for the life of me. Also on the outside of my bag, I've got this little cute cat and this serves as a bag. Sometimes I put rubbish in here if I find that in the woods, but also I'm gonna have some things that I'm gonna have to take home and wash, like the tea bag, they're reusable tea bags. Sometimes it just serves as a handy blanket that I can sit on, but I've also got that too. A little blanket here that I can sit on and it folds out. I'm not going to show you now, but it folds out into this really big picnic blanket. In the mists of winter, mud <laughs> is everywhere within the woods, so I need somewhere to sit where I'm not going to be really, really muddy. I've also got two batteries. I think I might need a third one though for today. My food that I'm going to be sharing with you in the woods and that little honey out the top there. This is such a handy little bag. A small towel or this is just a flannel to be honest because I love to bathe my feet within the woods and then when that's wet I put it in the little bag to wash. A stick pen. I bought some more of these. I'm so happy with them because they're quite small too so it fits in the bag perfectly. And my little notebook here too in case I need to sketch anything. Sometimes I bring out my big notebook with me and some watercolour pens and that is a really fun walk too. It just depends what mood I'm in. Today I just want to see and be and just see what happens. In the front here I have such a cute little compartment. I love it but it fits so much in. My fairy finder here. This is the original one that I found in my summer video a couple of years ago. I love a compass in the woods just to see if my map is correct and also put new things on the map just to see where I am. It's such a fun experiment to test my knowledge on that kind of stuff and also a magnifying glass because you never know what's gonna be so beautiful in the woods up close there's some amazing things that is all the little things that I have in my bag for today so I'm gonna have to just reload them up in the Tetris way that I do <laughs> but on me I have also my little pouch here this is is great for foraging because it opens up like this and then you can pull the strings tight oh it's absolutely amazing and then you can fold it back up like this too so really handy and then I don't need to be reaching in my backpack all the time to be putting things away and then as you saw I just put some of my brooches on my coat and these serve as protection for me as I put some protection chants on them just meaningful pieces that 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 did not take long one more thing now this is my new altar. <laughs> I've got another one, guys. No, on the cozy nook, I thought it'd be really fun just to make this little altar, but it's all about self love and it's got pink. 
oh, who am I? Um, like I said, I'm embracing pink, but also I'm using my Secret Garden Oracle card deck because it's that time of year where the Secret Garden first presented itself to the little girl in Secret Garden, so I thought, you know, of course I'm gonna use those. So I've been drawing every day and putting it into this little area. And um, let's find out today what the intention will be on our walk and if there's anything I need to particularly look out for because sometimes I do take these into the woods but majority of the time I pull one of these out at home. So let's just see what happens, shall we? Oh. I've never pulled this card before. It says, dare, take a risk and fly. I love that. Okay, so that just means I should do anything. Perfect, that's the kind of mood I'm in today, so. <laughs> okay, now we can finally go. So into the enchanted woods I go to lose my mind and find my soul. So I leave my home, I go up Birch Way where I'm greeted by the Tree of Secrets, I then continue down Birch Way which is a muddy mess at the moment and then I have arrived at where I'm always called to when I first venture into the woods, my special place. So I've just started to come down the heaving trail and it looks like the forest has had a party and thrown catkins as confetti as there's so many on the ground here. It's so bizarre, I've just like fallen. I mean, the weather has been quite bad, so I'm not surprised. So I'm just having a bit of a patrol and just checking up, seeing how everything is today. This is a massive ant's nest. The other day I saw little ants starting to wake up from hibernation, but now, because it's got a bit cold, they're like, nope. And they've gone back to sleep, bless them all. But yeah, look how big it is. <laughs> massive. <laughs> Every time I come down the trail, something always changes or something always sparks my attention, like this holly bush, still covered in so many berries. Also, the stream is so loud today. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm so excited because I'm going to put my feet in it in a bit and it's going to be really fresh. Yay! There's a massive dilemma in the woods because these beautiful honeysuckle, they are so lovely the way they wrap and tie around everything, but they destroy things in their process and they wrap and tie and strangle them. And it's such a dilemma in the woods because look, it growing up here is so lovely, but at the same time, it's wrapping it around and strangling it. So yeah, it's a bit of a dilemma because it's a beauty, but too much of it and it loses things. But upon further research, I found out that honeysuckle brings rare species to the forest, like the white admiral butterfly. And it's also seen as a symbol of protection in folklore. So maybe I can get to grips with it a little bit more now. Really big, and then really tiny. <laughs> I keep making my way up the twisted, mossy trail, always to be greeted by something. I think you'll find that this is the making of a massive fairy spyglass. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. <laughs> this is how they form when they're on the tree, and that's why we get so many of them. Until I reach my home, base, which is my tree stump. I'm currently on my tree stump looking out and this is what I see. It is basically, look here, I mean there's just so much to see. The holly trees, the fir trees, the moss, the layers of the forest, the sky up there, the birds, dogs barking. 
everything. There's my friend over there, Okie Doke. Beautiful oak tree. One of the reasons why I love the healing trail so much is that the trees outline the path and they're so easy to hug and befriend. I also love looking underneath the trees as in summer and spring and autumn there's so much that grows here and today there were some signs of new life. I don't know what these are but these are sprouts of something and they're really soft. Oh babies, hello, welcome. So every time I'm in the woods, I always start with the healing trail. I don't know why, it just cools me every time and it feels so protective over this place. So then after that, I go anywhere else and sometimes I go to the Hooray, sometimes I go to the Fairy Pools, the Secret Swamp. Honestly, it's just whatever cools me. So we'll look for signs and see where we're drawn to. I noticed this the other day, these roots. What do they look like to you? They look to me like a stick man with no head. Interesting, no wonder why there's tails that people get sucked under the roots. Hmm. As I continue to walk up the healing trail, I am greeted by the mossy den. And when I see that green moss, I am always invited in. So today I checked up on the fairy homes that were here. And if you look a little closer, you may be able to see a few fairies hiding within, as they are very good at camouflaging themselves. Someone's come over me and I've got really excited. <laughs> Because I'm looking at this moss. I love the moss so much and touching it and just, oh, it's everything to me. Especially this kind of moss. This kind of moss looks to me like what a fir forest looks like on Google Maps from afar. Don't you think? It's a mini fairy forest. These are all fir trees and I love the way they just move. So cute. It is here in the Mossy Den where I reach the end of the trail and now I had a few options of where to go next. Part of me wanted to play it safe today and just do my normal route, but part of me wanted to be daring like that card I drew and follow what was calling me. The sounds and the winds were whispering the word water. So I decided to venture to journey to the sacred fairy falls but before I got there, I stopped to visit some wise friends. I always find that every sacred fairy governed thing is protected on the path by a single strand of stinging nettles. It's always the way. And in this case, it's the Hraith. And I think it's just because if somebody's not fully aware or looking where they're going, the fairies might play a little trick on them. So I visited my grandmother you friend called the Hraith, but she told me that my purpose wasn't to see her today, even though I feel guilty not saying hello. She told me that I needed to walk to the right of her down the twisted and tangling walk I love this trail so much. It runs alongside the fir trees, but it hasn't got the privacy of the healing trail, so you won't see me pondering here. I do love it though, as either side of the trail, I always notice something different. And today, the most mossy fairy home called me. Oh, it's so soft. <laughs> it's so inviting. <laughs> Little piece of ivy there, so cute. And look, some old moss, beautiful colour, and some more of these vines. Mmm, I'm seeing a pattern already of what I'm attracted to in this walk. Oh my gosh, look, how cute! It's got little droplets on it of water. That's another vine. Oh, I love it. We're getting closer to the stream. Eee! It sounds magical.
So to get to my stream, we've also got to pass through the wise ones. Do any of you remember this place? It's where I found these ancient yew tree structures from a long time ago. And there's a wise tree stump. The throne. And there is this seat where Forrester can ponder. And also today I'm seeing a llama. I'm seeing a llama over there in that piece of wood. Can you see that? Interesting. So I sat upon the throne here and as I was sitting I saw a dragon face etched in a piece of bark. And then next to this I found my first item I foraged today which was a small piece of bark and I had to pick it up as I thought it was a sign. Look, you get distracted. <laughs> but distracted isn't a word here, guys, because actually I'm just enjoying in the moment. <laughs> now I'm going to take us both to the water, otherwise known as the heart of the forest. And I had arrived at the heart of the forest, the location of the gushing fairy falls. It is here that there is a prehistoric feeling of fundamental life, an instinctual sense that goes beyond every day. The boggy soil here plays an important role within the woods and it holds so much life such as frogs, toads, beetles, and slow worms. So it may look like a bit of a mossy graveyard, but contrary to that, fairies, animals, and ancient spirits love it. Oh my word, there are so many vines here. So many, oh my goodness, look at that enchanting structure. That one's even engraved into it, the way it's been twisting around, such a shame. It's so beautiful at the same time. So difficult, isn't it, guys? And we have, oh my God, it's a little bit overflowing today. <laughs> but we have arrived at the Fairy Falls. It's so therapeutic here. So the heart of the forest is basically here. It's this amazing place covered in moss and the vines and of course a river here that lives alongside it. And if I just go around here, I will share with you my special place that I love to go. Now, have a look at this gateway here. Isn't it so beautiful? It's like something from Lord of the Rings. Honestly, this could be my home here. I love it. I feel like this is like a movie set sometimes set up for me. <laughs> so I'll cross over here. Crossy crossy. Oh, avoiding all the little sprouts. And I'm going to go up here. Goodness me. <laughs> so boggy. That is my tree stump. There's also a pair of legs that live alongside the tree stump. <laughs> and the river goes on and on and on and on up there. Ah, oh, look at it all. The dream. I am getting quite hot now, so <laughs> I'm gonna just take my coat off for a minute and have a little rest. So it's time to enjoy my tea. Like I said, I've brought some teas with me, two different varieties of teas, one to open my crown chakra and one to ground me. And the first one I'm gonna be having is the one to open my crown chakra because I find that when I'm in the woods, I want to be swept away into this beautiful imagination that I have and that the woods has to give. But then coming towards the end of it, I want to then ground myself and then take away this beautiful experience. Sometimes that changes, sometimes I just want to ground myself, sometimes I just want to 
have a hot chocolate, you know? <laughs> so it completely depends on my day. This is actually meant to be a dog treat bag, but I don't use it for that and I never have done, so don't worry about that. Got my little honey with me. And the first tea I have is Tulsi tea and blue lotus flower. I'm really excited about this. As I waited for the tea to brew, I bathed my feet in the clean, freshly fallen rainwater. The waters within the wood are so energising this time of year as they've collected a lot of nutrients from the previous year and they often take a vial or two home to work with. But they are cold! But I endure it as it builds my strength and helps my body to get grounded. The moment I love and am slightly addicted to is when my thoughts just drift away as I become aware of my feet and my body and my primitive instincts. And now, as a reward, I'm going to drink my tea and just be in the moment. And I was not prepared for what happened next. For only a few minutes after, I started to feel different. I think the combination of opening your crown chakra after you've opened your root chakra, so what I just did obviously putting my feet in the river, is such an aligning exercise because my crown and my roots are now joining in the middle to one. I feel euphoric. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, feel, I feel great. What's happening to me? <laughs> I feel great. Oh, I love everybody. I love you guys. <laughs> Everything around me suddenly got so much brighter and the sounds got louder and I felt amazing. And I just felt there. And there's no other word for this feeling to be described as I was there. And that's all that mattered in that moment. It was me and the heart of the forest. So I decided to go for a little exploration. And at this point, I just couldn't even be bothered to film. <laughs> I was just so present and really loving the experience that I had no idea was coming my way. Um, oh my goodness, so the vines must have been intertwined with this tree for a long time. Oh my goodness, and this one and they just make these beautiful ridges. Oh, wow. Clean my shoes in the river. You might wonder, are there fairies that live here? And my instincts tell me, yes. Now I had opened my crown chakra and my third eye chakra, it meant I could connect with the fey realm. Oh my gosh, just found. A little fairy door. Oh, how cute. It, where I was sitting, I'd never noticed that before. Oh, so sweet. Look how small this tree is and how thick its moss is. <laughs> so sweet. And its little buds are going green. Oh my goodness. The nature around here was sharing with me so many messages that it only felt right to get out my notebook and draw what the nature and fairies were showing me. So, without overthinking, I drew what came naturally.
the picture ended up looking exactly like the twisted vines and the twisted tree that I sat beside. So I took out my magnifying glass to look at nature a little closer to connect deeper to the nature the fairies wanted me to see, seeing if there were any deeper messages hidden within. What did these twisted, tangling vines need to tell me? The Fae told me that these vines and tangled twigs were teaching me patience and that it takes time to unravel things. I think they meant it in two ways, one for me on my personal journey, but also a message for us Enchanted Ones, and that is that the unravelling of winter to spring takes time and it's a journey. And during March and April, this longing for new life that is slowly growing teaches us patience and it was only later that I realized that I placed upon myself a powerful alignment ritual which was opening the root chakra and then the crown chakra and it was this along with me being in the right place in the right time in nature that made me feel extreme awareness and in awe and the blue lotus flower tea So I'm on my way to the secret swamp now and I'm just going through a little cutway to get there because I'm not a main path kind of girl. I hate the main path so much. It means I have to smile at people. But no, I love just passing my character friends on the way like the one I can see before me right now. That's another grandmother you. And this grandmother you is protected by a gateway of holly. Her trunk has so many stories to tell, even her grandmother face. This is my friend, Grandmother Yu. Can you see her face? <laughs> I cannot believe this is a grandma. This is like the grandmother Willow in Pocahontas. She hears all of my stories and she's so wise. Just ask her a question and I know I'm gonna be rewarded with something wisdom, wisdomous. <laughs> Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> but, mwah, it's a lovely stop by you, Grandmother Willow, today. I hope you're doing well. A great sign to look for if there's fairies nearby is what kind of things are you finding underneath these trees? I'm seeing some quirky sticks. Oh my gosh, I love that. <gasps> oh my gosh, okay. I'm also seeing some of these cute fur cones that have just sprouted and fallen on the floor and I really think they look like mini fairy corn on the cobs. I'm sure somebody will be munching into them but I'm going to take a few home for my precious things that I found. So I journeyed from the Grandmother Yew through the forest of Lunda to one of my favourite places, the Secret Swamp. And just as I got here, the sun greeted me through the fir trees. I like this lighting. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. <laughs> Mysterious. <sighs> Welcome to the secret swamp. It's so beautiful here. It's like witchy, boggy, mysterious. There's a place for nature here and all the frogs and frog spawn and moss, which is so vibrant by the way, but also there's a place here for me to sit too. So it's like, here's my place where I know I belong and here's nature's place. And of course, I don't try and destroy any habitats or anything. I'm very careful with that because I know that it is mating season and everyone is having a great time. <laughs> I'm very hungry though. Oh my goodness, I'm so hungry. I've been out here for three hours so far. I am very peckish and I told you guys 
I bought some food with me. So we're going to have a little snack, a high in fiber snack. I have got with me, of course, my honey. We're gonna be using that in the snack too. I've got some oats and I've also got some dried fruit and nuts. And together, all these ingredients make the most delicious, delectable, fairy tale snack. Table. Okay, perfect. I put together different nuts and seeds and dried fruits, mixing it with equal quantity oats and a few tablespoons of honey. And once combined, it turns into the most delicious fairy snack. It tastes like the batter of a flapjack, sweet, earthy, grounding, a snack full of fibre, fats, sugars and energy that I needed to keep going here in the woods for hours. I'm also after my second tea, which is my grounding tea, because <laughs> that was <laughs> what I just experienced then. I'm, I'm not going to lie, guys. I've never experienced that before in the woods. <laughs> I felt just euphoric. It's that blue lotus flower, I'm telling you. Oh my goodness, that really opened up my intuition. I'm ready to ground myself now. So I have ashwagandha and also in here I've got hibiscus too. So ashwagandha is really, really good for grounding but also for health too. Hibiscus is really great for the heart chakra, just opening that up because I want to have a lovely, grounding, loving feeling right now. So it's a bit dirty, but you know what guys? We're in the great outdoors. So red, ooh, pretty. That's the hibiscus turning in red. Beautiful. Ooh, wow. Kind of tastes like fairy wine. I don't know, it has a kick to it as a punch. Mm, I like it. If I was a fairy, I would love this wine. I am a fairy. <laughs> what I love about this place is the fur cones though. And it tells me that fairies definitely love this place because the fur cones are so tiny. They are so mini and the, the cutest things this is the first place that ever stood itself out to me because of that exact reason, the fur cones. <laughs> I was just like in awe. Sometimes you can find fur cones that are just the size of, <laughs> look. I can't get enough guys, they're all around my house or in every fairy home, every corner of my house. So, and I guess the scale of the massive trees here, I mean, look at them. They're huge and then you've got these tiny fir cones underneath and I guess that's what called me to this place because it's this contrast of like masses and masses of fir trees and like the eye just goes on for miles and then you've got all these really tiny things like the moss and the fir cones, they make up this massive big picture. I don't know, if I move you here then we can see over here that we've got this kind of bit there and this has the ferns underneath it and like it just looks like I'm on a green screen it doesn't look real to me so that's one of the thoughts that I had when I first came here too like is this real <laughs> but yes it's very much real as you can see I am on this tree <laughs> And I do just feel like lying down, to be honest, and just being one with the earth here. It's so hidden. I call it the secret swamp because, yeah, it's hidden. I can do anything I want here, guys. No one needs to know about it. <laughs> so I'll drink my cup of tea and then maybe I'll get some cardio in. <laughs> I remember in my early 20s when all I wanted to be was exploring the world and going to different adventures in different countries but now I realize that actually my back door gives me this and when I am here within the secret swamp on my own ground I could be anywhere so I decided to hunt for some signs of spring frogs born over there Frog spawn over there. 
It's everywhere. Oh my gosh. So much frog spawn. And then it was time for some cardio. And you ever run so hard you feel like your leg is going to fall off? Well, that is what I love to do here. And it is liberating. Also, I should mention that when the sun's out here, it is heavenly. Along with all those other descriptions I gave you earlier. <laughs> and the way it shines through that over there. <gasps> Let's get a closer look. All I want to be in life is within a tree. Ah, <laughs> oh, perfect. Look at these needles. So nice. I feel so much more grounded now. I feel good. Yeah. Oh, and it's raining. Oh no. <laughs> ah dear. Well, there is one other place I would like to go today. And I'm really excited to say that it's not massively boggy anymore. And it's somewhere about 30 seconds from my back door. So we're gonna venture back home. But before we get there, of course, we're gonna go to the Fairy Island and have a check up and see how spring is settling in. And it looks like, I have to put this on. And then the sky opened and had a spring shower, which is typically a five minute shower where the sun is out the whole time. Wow, so misty. Oh, it's like fairy dust. How bizarre. I just had to take refuge under a fir tree to hope my camera <laughs> was okay. But the sun's out and it was raining and it was just beautiful. The mist like created, oh, heavenly. Right, we're still on our way to the island, guys. On my travels, I also saw some gorse, a beautiful yellow shrub, which flowers can be used in tea or eaten raw. And then I continued to travel south where I got to Birch Way, where the deciduous trees lie. And upon the entrance, I was greeted by a white feather. And then I had arrived at the fairy's island. The trickling fairy falls were falling beautifully today. And to cross over to the island, I always imagine this stick being like a ship steering tiller. Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be back here sitting down on the ground. Oh my gosh, and there's so many signs of spring here. And I have to share them all <laughs> with you. I had to take my shoes off because those massive shoes look good. <laughs> but they don't make me feel grounded at all. I need to sort that out. <laughs> I need to get some like grounding shoes. I can see oh, these beautiful heart shape what look like clovers but actually they are sorrel wood sorrel they are delicious they taste like lemon bitter lemon i'd say and um this is my first one of the year mm. Mm. there's a little robin over there too Cute. even the tiniest little one so sweet i love it elder cones here along with some catkins that hadn't fully grown before it dropped off, that's a shame. Some empty hazelnuts from last year. How sweet. There's been a party with the catkins again <laughs> around here. Always with these deciduous trees, of course, because they produce the catkins. I love those, some more elder cones there. I love those, they remind me of the secret swamps, fir cones. And there is something very exciting coming up and they're all behind me, little, green sprouts of bluebells. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, bluebells. I mean, speak to me about bluebells right now. And I'm like, what? What's a bluebell? I cannot wait for bluebells. I forget how much I love them each year because of course they only last for a couple of weeks. And there's one particularly here that every year I'm always rooting for it to like flower, but it's never flowered. So I'm really, really hoping this year that it does. And of course, soon everything is going to be waking up from hibernation. So I thought, oh, apart from the birds, which are very, very active, of course, I thought it'd be really fun to set up a little nature altar just to honour fertility and the upcoming rising of spring with everything that I found here within the woods. I don't want to add anything else to it because, of course, everything is here in front of me. It's all biodegradable and amazing. So I'm going to set it up here. I have a little altar, and if you remember from last year's video, and it's still got some of my items that I've put there last year which I'm very happy about which means that I'm probably the only person that ventures over here <laughs> again nobody can see me here oh I like that little piece of light oh cute let's see no let's put everything under here in a really magical whimsical way to appease and love nature and show the fairies that we are very grateful for them At first my plan was just to make a little picture with the nature that I found but then the more I placed items the more my intuition led me somewhere else and it was like the fairies were connecting with me again and telling me what to create for them and this time it was a beautiful little nest. I'm getting cold. So that was just my gift back to the fairies and the birds and nature for everything that they've given me today. And I love doing that on my walks. But this has been such a good walk. You know, it's been a good walk when you think back to the beginning and you think, who even was I then? You think, I'm a changed person since the beginning of my walk. That's when you know. <laughs> I feel so revitalized now and I feel so aligned. I feel like it's time to venture back home. But I, of course, have to take something to remember this time here. So I'm gonna take these elder cones. I found another one on my coat and I just heard from the fairies that they wanna give it to me too. So thank you so much, fairies. <laughs> Lovely. I can't be bothered to put this back in the bag. Don't even make me do that. Right. Okay. So it was off home to get cosy, but also to do some altar work and analyse some of my findings from my walk today. So I've just come home and I've made a cup of tea. I've changed my clothes. <laughs> every time I go into the woods, every single item of clothing I'm wearing needs to go into the wash. But nonetheless, it's lovely to have like a nice change when you get home and you feel refreshed. Along with making a cup of tea, there's something just so magical to me about making a cup of tea. 
after I come home for a walk. It's just like, I kind of feel a bit sad because I'm away from the woods, but at the same time, it's just like, just mundane, magical experience of, ah, oh, I'll just put the kettle on. And I feel like really grateful, I don't know. Anyone else understand what I mean by that? <laughs> it's just those basic things that are just so amazing in my life and they make me very humble. So anyway, this is one of my favorite parts of a walk. Going home and analyzing what I have and finding a place for it around my home because everything I've ever gotten from the woods or picked up always finds a place. The things I got today already seem to be quite mysterious and there's quite a few coincidences. One of them is the stick that I bought. Now a minute ago you might have heard me say that it was the same. It's basically the same as this stick, like the angles of it. I think that's really interesting. And this is the one that I got literally, I think it was the beginning of the week. It must have been on Monday when I went into the woods. It has like a dragon face on one side and on the other side, it had almost like a dolphin or a swan face. Over here, it also looked a bit like a heron. So it was a stick of many faces. <laughs> and today coming back with the same stick, it's like the woods want to tell me something again. It's like you have to analyse these sticks. On Monday also I picked up a really cute little stick along with that one and I turned it into a handle on my wand and I thought how cute is that? It reminds me of like a pirate sword so it has a purpose now and I picked it up obviously for a reason it wants me to hold this cute little piece of bark this sweet piece of moss landed on me when I was on the island a couple of minutes ago and I love how it's got these cute little free little seed heads at the top there I think that's quite symbolic for something the elder cones and the fairy corn on the cobs now I know exactly where these fairy corn on the cobs are going to go straight away into the fairy's home into the kitchen <laughs> Fairy corn on the cops. What do you think? Do you like it? Hmm? I think one of these elder cones would look amazing on this wand. Ooh! Oh my god guys, I've just realised something. This stick now, what well, it became, this kind of piratey sword, this is the same shape as the sword that I've kept on Fairy Island that I showed you earlier. I had such an urge to go there today. Hmm, yeah, I love that. Another strange coincidence. Hmm. Okay, I keep a glue gun over here. <laughs> For emergencies like this one. Here he is. Glue gun. Let's glue it on. I quite like this idea too because it reminds me of the deciduous trees, the elder trees, and the fir trees, the evergreen trees. So there's this nice balance here, like the Holly King and the Oak King, kind of between them upon this sword. With the rest of the elder cones, I'm going to put them in my little nest that I have on my piano. Cute, they fit there perfectly. Yeah. I just don't know about these sticks. Could be anything, could make a letter, couldn't they? That looks like an R, to be honest. And then, oh, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on guys, this is an R, this, this is an R, I need to, I need to get my runes, me rune symbols. R, okay, oh, perfect, read them. Okay. Right, what does it say in this book? Ray Doe. 
sound R or R ah, as in ride or raid. Or the noise a pirate makes. Lol. <laughs> My pirate sword's there. <laughs> what? For goodness sake, guys. For goodness sake. So, you want to know what the rune Rado means, which is the R symbol. It means going on an adventure. It means taking risks, trying new things, the thrill of the journey. Just like the card I got this morning. Just like what I'm doing in the woods all day. The gift is the excitement of new experiences. The challenge is too much focus on adventure with no regard for real life events. Well, I think that that sums up very nicely what I have just experienced. Now, I am speechless. <laughs> Put these symbols here together. <laughs> And remember guys, nothing is oenokified without a sprinkling of moss. <laughs> I really need to make over this box. Maybe I can do that in the next video. <laughs> of course it's a yar. That's not really me, is it? Can't stand it up. I think I also need to put a bit of moss on this. Like, come on, I have to. Just a touch. See if this works. Put that on there. Perfect. And for my final thing, this piece of moss. How many times have I said moss in this video? I don't know. I'm gonna put it on this little wooden plaque thing and it's sealed so water can't get through it and I'm going to keep it moist and just to see maybe those things on top might turn into something you never know but I just want to honour some moss at my altar because I've never really done that before Enchanted ones, thank you so much for watching this video. I really am stunned by the way everything's played out and I think the moral of the story here is so many things can happen when you're just open to experience nature. Every time, and I'll always say this, I am completely gobsmacked and I have no idea what has unraveled before me. So thank you so much nature and the woods and the fairies and the spirits and the spirit guides Thank you so much, Enchanted Ones. Everything that I got has a place now. I'm so happy about it. Let me know what your favorite part was below. Let me know also, what was your favorite place within the woods that I visited? Thank you so much. All of my love, Arlowin. So I'm on my way to the healing swamp. No, shut up. The healing swamp. <laughs> Time I go here, I'm like, why haven't. Ah, oh, what's that? God. <sighs> it is my coat. Ah! What are you doing? Got here, we have elder wands. Elder wands? No, we haven't got the elder wands. Because it reminds me of the deciduous trees. So the elder wand. The elder trees. I oh, got the elder wand. <laughs>